And we continue, like last Saturday, with the verse 44. Uh, I will read, of course, this verse first. But for all of you who want to read together with me, we start page 177 of the English version, fourth paragraph. Uh, it's, it starts with the word, Natamsha Yo brings Swamini's beautiful shoulders on the path of our memories. Page 177, I have written it in the Because chat, but it's difficult to say which edition you have. Okay, we start. Verse 44, Vilap Kusumanjali. O Devi, when he touches your lower shoulders in the Rasa dance, Krishna, the enemy of Mura, looks like a full moon. Kalanidi. Kalanidi. Shining with an abundance of lust. Šta znači da vam potvrđeno je bilo? Sada je ovo hrvatsko. Čuješ se, isključi mikrofon. Mora ti stajati crveni križ. O oh, Kalavati, artistic girl, when will this maidservant joyfully place a garland of sweet jasmine flowers surrounded by wandering humming bees on those shoulders? So we start with the purport. I, I don't know, I think Radacharan. <coughs> Do you know where? You don't know. It is, you have the English uh, version, it's 177. Page 177, fourth paragraph, the word Natamshaya brings Swam in his beautiful shoulders. Got it? Okay. The word Natamshaya brings Swam in his beautiful shoulders on the path of our memories. How sweet are Sri Radhika's shoulders during the Rasa Leela? The shoulders are lowered because Rasa Vilasi's Yamasunda keeps his big rod-like arm on them. How many arts of Shyamasunda are revealed? Kalavati Shirada 
Kalanidische Krishna. Artisti Grada and Shyam. How beautiful is the expert meeting? Without accepting the mood of a maid servant, this beauty is hard to imagine. In his narration of the Rasa Lila, Sri Shukamuni has certainly mainly described the Naika Bhav. But it is not that he did not mention Saki Bhav at all. So Naika Bhav means the relationships of independent heroines with Sri Krishna, and Saki Bhav means the mood of the gopis who prefer to arrange for Radha and Krishna's meetings over their own meetings with Krishna. Manjaris are a kind of sakis. Rade. Rade, Rade. So we should try to repeat, actually, many times we are trying to speak about these differences of different <clears throat> female associates of Krishna. And our Gurudev is pointing out that it's very important to un understand these differences. And here Baba is trying also to clarify about different Bhavas from different female associates. And we can see he is first mentioning Naikas, then Sakis, and Manjaris. So Naikas are those females, coward girls, who wants direct association with their beloved Krishna. They are focused only on him. Sometimes we are calling them Vishamsnik. There are millions, billions, billions, billions of different Naikas. And they want union with Krishna. And many of them are mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam in this chapter of Rasalila. Then there is another group of Sakis, which were in they want to make arrangements for Radhika and Krishna. They are not particularly interesting in meeting close association with Krishna. They want to make arrangements for Radha and Krishna loving pastimes. And very often we are calling them samasniha, gopis or sakis. So it means that they have same love, sama, for Radhika and for Krishna. 
But still, when there is some opportunity, or when Radhika ordered them to go with Krishna and to be along with Krishna, they are accepting that proposal, that order, because deep in their hearts, very deep in their hearts, they still wants close association, intimate association with, with Krishna. And there is a third group. Baba is saying, Manjaris, they are also somehow are belonging to this group of Sakis, but they are completely Radha Adisneha. They are completely partial to Radhika. They are focused on Radhika. And they are completely loyal to Shimati Radharani. And in there is no any situation in which they will express any kind of desire to enjoy or to give the pleasure with their bodies to Krishna. They are always with Radhika. They are always loyal to Radhika. And they are always ready to prepare a meeting between Radha and her beloved. So many times we were talking uh, about that, but it's very important always to <laughs> remember to repeat because we can see our Gurudev is also many times is repeating and also Baba is here in this part of commentary repeating these differences because our advancement and our attainment of the final goal depends of really knowing these differences, but also not knowing, feeling of these differences. And our Acharyas are trying to help us, giving us, through their own words, they are giving us their bhava, their feelings. And all Acharyas who already accepted and un the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they are in the mood of Manjaris. And they are following Rupa Manjari or Rupa Goswami, as we say, Rupa Nugas. There are others, but this most exalted and unique position which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave to Jivas is to become Radha Dasi, or better to say Radha Dasi of the Dasi Anu Dasi Anu Dasi Dasi Dasi. So proper understanding and also proper practice of proper bhava will bring devotee in situation that he by the mercy can attain his own goal. So Chakshu Ji will continue to read or Gurudev wants to add something. I just wanted to briefly stop here in this commentary. Okay. Okay, Chakshu Ji, you can continue, please. Mm -hmm. Radhe Radhe Jayananda Ji, welcome. Sorry, we are today. reading from page 177. Hmm? 177. Okay. 177. Mm -hmm. Okay. 177. Mm -hmm. uh, about pretty much about in the middle of the page. Which is over. <laughs> Ah, okay, 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 thank you. Welcome. 
So I repeat this sentence again. In his narration of the Rasa Lila, Sri Shukamuni has certainly mainly described the Naika Bhav, but it is not that he did not mention Saki Bhav at all. Marjorie are a kind of Saki. So the mantras they are dedicated to devotional service alone. It cannot be conclusively ascertained from the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam whether there were mantras present during the Ratha dance or not. But Srila Kavikarnapurna writes in Ananda Vindavan Champu, its elaboration on the tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, about Anucharis, or maid servants in the Rasa dance. And Srila Rupa Goswami has written a verse in his beautiful book, Utkalaka Kalkavalari, about Marjoris in the Rasa Leela and about their superiority over the Sakis. When will my heart be filled with pride as I see from afar how Keshava leaves all the lotus-eyed girls of Rag at the beginning of the Rasa dance in Vrindavan and takes you to a lonely place where he, under your command, decorates you with flowers. This verse particularly shows the presence of Madhuri in the Rasa dance. And their usual unique fortunate position. Wherever Shimati is, there are the maid servants. Following her like her shadow. Srimati cannot keep anything secret from them, for they are not different from the light and the body. Radhe, Radhe. Is it possible <clears throat> this sound which is coming from Munger to nullify somehow? Mm -hmm. Let's see, just a moment. I will try to do something here. Yes, and I can thank you. Oh. Yes, perfect. How about perfect. now? Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. So we can hear in this part of commentary of Anantadas Babaji the essence of Manjari Bhav. They are, they are not different from Radhika in their life, in their emotions. And they are not different in the body. But what is the difference? <laughs> they look like a Radhika, but they are smaller and younger. They are very sweet. They are very beautiful. They are very, very clever. 
because all these qualities they received from Shrimad Radharani. And when you and when a person receives some qualities for other persons, especially emotions, then he becomes like this person. And Manjaris are always close to Radhika, like a shadow. Baba is explaining. Manjaris I like a shadow with the Radhika. And because of that, only one point to, to the Radhika, they are become, be becoming like Shimati Radharam. So it is for eternal Manjaris. But the same things goes for the sadakas who nourish in their hearts desire to become one day manjaris. And the way how they can do it is to be closed, loyal, like a shadow, with those persons who are already on that position. Because in that way, all bhavas, all feelings, all toads, manjari toads, only manjari toads, expertise, manjari expertise, manjari qualities will be infused. And for that reason, we need sadhu sangha of premika devotees who are in that mood, who already attain perfection in that mood, because they are constantly drowning in the lake of Rasa, of Radha and her beloved. So we can see here how Rupa Goswami, because he's eternal associate of Shrimati Radhika, perfectly describe this specific position of Manjaris during the Rasa dance. We know that Rasa dance is a Rasa festival, actually. So many different Naikas and Sakis are dancing. And in the middle of this mandal circle of Rasa dance, the essence of this mandal circle are Radha and Krishna. But in the moment, when Radhika leaves this circle, all Rasa dance fell apart. All Rasa dance just stopped. All these beautiful Naikas, Sakis, different Gopis, they cannot hold the Krishna on one place because he is running to find Radhika. And who is witnessing this? Like a viewer, a little bit aside of this circle, only Manjaris. And Rupa Goswami is going further and says what he is saying. I, I will just try to read. Yes, he see then how Krishna and Radhika are alone in the place. Who can see that they are alone? <laughs> Only Manjaris. Sakis, they don't see what they are not aware, they are not witnessing, and they cannot see what's going on when they are alone. But Manjaris, they are able to witness that. And in that way, Rupa Goswami is discovering, revealing, sorry, revealing 
that although Shuka Devmuni didn't mention directly that Manjaris were present in the all festival of Rasa dance, that they actually have been there and not that only witnessing they came on this alone place where Radha and Krishna are alone and they serving them in this most confidential situation. So we should understand that love between Radha and Krishna is a secret love, Paraki above. And who knows the best this Paraki above? Only those who are shadows of Shimateradara. Manjaris, Kinkaris. And this and another thing is that those Kinkaris who are writing the scriptures very often are writing in a codes because they are talking or writing and revealing the most confidential Parakya Bhava mood. So this Parakya Bhava mood requires secret to be very secretly revealed. And only those persons, those devotees who are very close to this mood, for them is so natural. <coughs> they can read between the lines. Beautiful, beautiful. Very nice. Very nice. I'm very happy. Thank you. Only for your pleasure, Andradikas. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Enlighten us, Gurudev. I'm trying to inspire you, but I'm very bad. I cannot. This is the special gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> Okay, kids, <laughs> just entered, and then <laughs> radi, radi. So that's very nice, the mood. We should learn from these small girls, which kind of emotions they have. They are not foolish. Yes, it said even foolish child can receive the mercy of Chaitanya, but this is just expression. Because who wrote these Shastras? Manjaris. But they are not foolish child. They have like a child mentality, like a child, but not ordinary child. Very clever radicals made shadows, made servants. This is completely another childish mentality. They are very simple. Very playful, but very, very cl clever. So, if we look, even from material points, if we look, sometimes the girls of different ages, we can see great differences, because there's a great difference between 10 age, 10 year old girl, 11 year old girl, and especially 12 and 13. And these manjaris are reflecting Radhika's emotions, and they are also reflecting each other's emotions. And this is because of Sajatya Sangha. So.
And this is the proof why Baba is saying that Manjari, uh, this uh, description of Rupa Goswami clearly describes superiority of Manjaris over the Sakis. <laughs> This is superiority, transcendent, the spiritual, pure, loving superiority. Radhi. So I'm going to read the last two sentences again because they're so beautiful. Wherever Shimati is, there are her maidservants. Following her like her shadow. Shimati cannot keep anything secret from them, for they are non different from her life and body. It sounds like a sweet, isn't it? <laughs> Rasgul. Srila Raghuna Das Goswami says, Rakura Kama Bunjayova Lat Kalanidi. Each limb of Krishna, the ocean of ours, is blazing with desire to unite with each limb of the artistic girl, Shriyarika. He is, after all, the embodiment of the transcendental erotic fl flavor. Radhe, this is the reason this is the small commentary of Baba, which he is explaining why Krishna is addressed like an enemy of Mura in the words. Because each of his limb is the ocean of arts and blazing with the desire for each limb of Shimati Radhika. He is becoming so attractive because he is burning in desire to touch, to smell, to see, to embrace, to kiss each limb of Kala Vati. And because of that, he is so attractive. And because of his beauty, sweetness, and attractiveness, which he received from Srimati Radhika, he very easily conquered the demon Mura. And who is demon Mura? He represents the ugliness, ugliness of false ego, demoniac mentality, which brings ugliness in the person, outside and inside ug ugliness. And Krishna, with his sweetness and beauty, conquering this enemy, because he is so attractive, and why he is so attractive? Because he is burning in desire to unite with Shimati Radhika. Our most beautiful, sweet, artistic girl. And this desire is not a mundane, selfish desire. This is important. When we are listening about this subject, 
and lilas and different qualities, we should always know that this is a pure love, pure relationship, and only way to properly serve this lilas with our ears is to try as much as we can to listen from the angle of spiritual identity, not from the bodily concept of life. As much as we can, the better will be. And we have to have a Shraddha, faith, that by such kind of listening, hearing, meditating, and talking, our mundane, selfish desires, lust, slowly but surely will be vanished. This is the instructions which are Acharya is giving us, and they hope that they will accept with the open heart. Brother. Srila Jiva Goswami writes about the opening verse of the Rasa Lila chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam. And this opening verse is Srimad Bhagavatam 10.29.1. Although the Lord is Atmaram or self-satisfied, and Aptakama, completely fulfilled. Devotional love can still awaken desires within his heart. The Lord can do anything to increase the ecstasy of his loving devotees and to accept the service and, ren and accept the service rendered by them. His main purpose is to fulfill the desires of the beautiful girls of Raj and the gopis only purpose is to make their beloved happy. To reveal the supreme truth, Srimad Bhagavat relates the Rasa Leela of the Lord and the Vracha Sundaris in five chapters. And these chapters are like the five life heirs of Srimad Bhagavatam. Just as the soul cannot remain in the body without the five life heirs, the five Rasalila chapters are the very life of Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is the essence of Srimad Bhagavatam. And I remember when I came in Vrindavan first time and met Gurudev, many times he was mentioning that actually first we should read Ten Kanto. especially Vraj pastimes, to know what is the goal of bhakti. And when we define the goal, then start from the first chapter. Because if we don't know the goal, 
final, ultimate goal. We can be very lost in so many descriptions in Srimad Bhagavatam. And we can see here how Anantadas Babaji is also saying that from all Bhagavatam, the essence is the Rasa, Lila, and five chapters which are describing this. This exchange of love between different kinds of gopis and Krishna. This is the essence of Bhagavatam. This is the reason why Bhagavatam is written. Because of the essence. And someone who understands and feels this essence, he will understand and accept very easily the other commentaries and other verses in Srimad Bhagavat. And we can see that Prabhupada, when he was writing the books, he wanted to make the summary of 10th canto, and he started to translate, but he made a Krishna book because he was worried what's happened if I cannot finish 10th canto. So he made condensed form of 10th canto in the form of Krishna book 1 and Krishna book 2 to give devotees opportunity to understand and to feel deeply what is the ultimate goal of devotional service. And it's very interesting that actually Krishna book was the first book which was distributed in the Sankirtan. Chakshuji knows and Jayanandaji knows that. It's arrangement, isn't it? From all books which Prabhupada wrote, Krishna book was the first one which distributed, I think, in the petrol station or something like that. Devotees exchanged the book for the petrol price. And it was the first book. So this is very meaningful. That behind that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who wants that Raj will spread all over the world. Raj mode, informations of Raja Prema, these fine bhavas, and especially hidden personality, Shimati Radhika, would be glorified in this world. And only because of that we are here. And that is the beauty of Ananda Swabhaji. You cannot find any place. I see many books. Is nothing clear because Ananda Swabhaji is sitting there and he is looking and writing it. So I will request who want this mood, he has to stop reading another book. This has to be fixed. Two things is necessary. One is agreed for this, and one is a Thai bhav, fixed nature. All will be crystal clear. All will be very clear to understand. Krishna himself said, he, my guru is Radhika. So Narayan Maharaj is telling that why not people, if he love Krishna, like Krishna, why not follow his words? That Radhika is guru. <laughs> He is a real teacher. And if I become Dhatri of Radhika, what is my problem? What I do offense? I want to, to, to follow Krishna. 
because he accepts Guru, why not I have to listen to that and follow her and only to fix her in her Krishna and do this. He no deviate. After all, gopis is there because he promised in Rama Avatar to do that. So they become gopis. And what is the meaning of gopi? To be a spiritual, to be in his bodily consciousness, come out from that. Come to the soul consciousness. That is Gopi Bhav. When you know the soul, you see the super soul. Is this is Krishna? And when we become pure like Gopi, then we realize the spirituality. We cannot understand without soul. Soul body. Kripa, Kripaluji is telling, I was listening his class in Hindi. Kripaluji said that soul take the form, body. That is my, my reality. Soul is not there, body will not exist. My senses will not active. I will not use useless. Similarly, Soul took the body, and my the, this body, spiritual body, soul is Radhika. So, if you want to live in a spiritual body, you have to be connected with Radhika because this body comes from her. She is the soul of my spiritual body. How the mind exists can be <laughs> If she is not there, my spiritual body cannot exist without real my soul. So simple one line, it become more crystal clear to me. Like this body cannot exist without soul. How my spiritual body will exist without my spiritual heart who give me this material spiritual body? She is my soul. His spiritual body is soul is Radhika. Is all divine, nothing material. This past time is coming for us to how to bring out from the material to the spiritual. And this is the gift of Chaitanya. No one give this to go to the soul consciousness. Nobody to say about that. Only without purity, I cannot be a dasi of Radhika. To become pure like a soul, to get the body, you a spiritual body, and this body will exist when his soul is there, and the soul of the spiritual body is Radhika. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much, Gurudev, for these clear, simple instructions. And what more? He said, Mahaprabhu's slogan that everything in the name, 
So there is no difference between the name between Radha and herself. So name can change my life. That's it, nothing else. Right. Thank you. Of all these loving girls, Srimati Radhika is supreme and unrivaled. She is the crown jewel of gopis and no one can make Krishna enjoy so much as her. One thing, why she become angry with Krishna? Today, Chandravali catch, and he gives so much love that you are mine. You are, I'm yours. No, you, I'm yours. <laughs> I will give everything to you. And he is coming from Chandravali to Radhika. So she gives so much love to attract Krishna. So why she become angry? She is not angry that why you go to Chandravali, because Chandravali also is Radhika, expansion of Radhika. Mm -hmm. All gopis is expansion of Radhika. But you want to give all punishment different way of relishment to Krishna. And now you want to give different way of relishment to him. So she become angry. <laughs> when you eat too much sweet, you need some sour and salty thing to eat. Then you will realize the taste of the sweetness. <laughs> So our angerness is also Krishna is running. <laughs> Manjiri knows that if Krishna will become angry, then it will be a big problem for me to find out again to him from other places. So, they, how beautifully deal to Radhika, that is to feel it, how much it is clever and control to Radhika. <laughs> this is a special gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> Never happened before. Even Krishna cannot do in Krishna's pastime without mercy of Chaitanya, we cannot enter in this sweetness. <coughs> I read before Chaitanya Chaitanya. I don't understand without understanding of Vilakus Mandali. So, Maria.
you are giving so beautiful classes so nicely my life only can change our life can change when we realize it and fix our nature in dasi this is palya dasi wow as time how we have in our sarupa was that is the only way to progress greed means i want this and ragunath das goswami is greeting again go back to sadak deha to siddh deha that again he want to 24 7 he want to be in the lilas maran so he is living there and is greeting more and more that to live and that is that जाओ Uchwala, Krishna's abundant lust makes him yearn for playful pastimes with Sri Radha. There are other consorts also, but Krishna's mind is fixed on Sri Radhika, and although millions of gopis dance wonderfully during the Rasa dance. Krishna's gaze is fixed on Sri Radha. How wonderfully sweet are these pastimes! He embraces one gopi. He kisses one gopi, and he makes love with another gopi. He can please everyone, but only Sri Radhika can please him. That is her speciality. राधे राधे राधिके रा प्रेम गुरु आमी शिष्यनाथ सो समटाइम्स डिवोटिस आर आस्किंग हाउ आई कैन प्लीज द कृष्णा व्हाट व्हाट ही विल बी सेटिस्फाइड ही हैज एवरीथिंग but the question it's not proper question actually the proper question is what he likes the most not what he has but what he likes the most and he likes the most to be loved and to give the love and who is giving the most love shimati radhika from all devotees he has everything what he needs he doesn't need anything but only one thing he hankering desperately hankering for the love and the source of all love and the embodiment of the love all love is shimati radhika so he is running after her 
And idea to worship Krishna without Srimati Radhika is completely crazy. <laughs> it's not Vaishnavism at all. And we can see here, Baba took so many words to explain us that the center of the life, the center of every relationship is based on the embodiment of love. Mahabha Swarupini Radeta Kurani. And Krishna is showing what is the ultimate goal of life for him and what to speak about others. So taking the shelter of Shimati Radharani is the best decision for each jiva, sooner or later. And that is, Chakshuji read, that is her speciality. <laughs> that. She is Kalavati, an artistic girl, indeed. Her lower shoulders show that she has met Shyamasunda. His left arm rests on her shoulder, and this makes her very blissful. Tulasi's expert narration crystallizes the flavors of the rasa dance before Mahavavamai. Tulasi immerses Kishori Mani's mind in the Lila Rasa, Bratling. Now his arm rests on your shoulders. If I hang this jasmine garland on them now, it may ultimately break. Anyway, let it break. And this is what Kuranga Sondra explained to us, the purpose of the God. <laughs> its only purpose is anyway to make Shyam attract to you and to make him touch you. Blessed is this maidservant who can make Swamini happy like her. She won't just hear any old topic. If it suits her mood, she will hear it, otherwise not. Mahaprabhu also did not hear any old topic. Whoever brought a song or a Sanskrit verse to Mahaprabhu first had to recite it to Swarup Damodha. And if Swarup Damada approved of it, he would let Mahaprabhu hear it. If the song or text was not in good taste or was philosophically controversial, the Lord could not tolerate it and would be angry within his mind. So this is the point 
what Gurudev was mentioning many times. If we want to attain our bhav, to be fixed in our sthai bhav like a manjaris, there are proper scriptures for realization of that, for practicing of that and realization of that. There is many scriptures which are explaining different kinds of rasa, and maybe they can be interesting and relishing for devotees who are in that rasa. But we should know that each devotee who has his own sthai bhava, he is interesting in relishing only his own rasa and lilas which nourish his rasa. So this beautiful book of Vilapakusamanjali is helping to practice and to realize the Manjari Bhava if we want. This is a manual, practical manual, emotional, mental manual, sevika manual. And all help which is necessary, is infused in these books and commentaries of Anantadas Babaji. Like Gurudev here is speaking, he is writing or speaking. His writing is speaking, actually. There is no difference. He is speaking to us by writing the words from his own realization and own bhav. And everyone who has real genuine taste will surrender to the words of Mahavani, of all these manjaris who are writing, who are talking through their books to us neophytes and sadhakas devotees. And we can see here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't want to listen any mood which is not proper to his own feelings. And his own feelings have been, especially in Jagannath Puri, deeply immersed in Radha Bhav and also in Manjari Bhav. And this is the reason why confidential devotees like Swarup Damodar and Ravananda Roy have been so close with him and we're reading these scriptures which can nourish his mood because this is real association. If we don't nourish the mood of each other, then we don't have association. Maybe physical, yes. But what is the meaning of that? If we don't help each other to nourish proper Manjari Bhava, it's a misfortune. But if we help each other with the guidance of Gurudev and other Manjaris, then we can say, I have proper Sangha. I'm hankering for that Sangha. I'm not frustrating. This Sangha is not giving me the pain. This Sangha is revealing me from the, my pain of materialistic life. Otherwise, it's useless. It's art to learn how to associate. It's not just for a grant. Right. Sorry. Yeah, the sentence confirms. These confidential topics must be 
discussed in the group that is favorably disposed. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever we do, we need to be surrounded with proper Baba. If we sing the bhajan, we need the proper bow. If we do our, if we are cooking, we need the proper bow. Because this is not the work, this is the seva. And we need bhava, and also we need the support for that bhava, that our seva becomes at least a little bit successful, <laughs> at least. So here in this Zoom, now, we have that opportunity. This is seva. We are doing seva with our ears, with our mouths, tongues, mind, heart, and also eyes. Because whatever we are talking, we can see in the screen of our mind. And this is the mercy of Acharyas. Right. The screen of our mind. <laughs> it's good to change to this screen. While doing bhajan, the mind must meet the minds of the acharyas. Devotional service cannot be rendered while the mind remains in material consciousness. We must be able to exchange thoughts with each other. How pure the mind must be for that. It's so clear. This is association with pure devotees. If we can connect our hearts and minds with their heart and mind, not expecting that they connect with our mind and heart, <laughs> and be angry when they don't want to do that. No, we should have be enough humbly, humble that we connect our mind. But if we have a hidden motives, they are blocking these strong connections. And this is the ba why Baba is saying how pure the mind must be for that. Won't I become the way she, to whom I give my life, wants me to be? O Swamini, then you will not have any secrets for me anymore. For attaining Radharani's service, the devotee must give his whole mind to her, giving up everything else. <laughs> Yagana's mind is in the kingdom of transcendental pastimes. Standing before Swamini, she says, Look, I will adorn your lowered shoulders with this jasmine garland. Radha and Shyam keep their arms on each other's shoulders. That's why their shoulders are low. 
How sweetly and expertly they shuffle with their feet. When Shyam places his left arm that is so long that it reaches down to his knees on Srimati's left shoulder during the Rasa dance, he extends it so far that he can touch her left breast. But Swamini slaps him on the hand to stop him from such naughty acts. They relish each other's sight from the corners of their eyes. And their arms are studied with goose pimples. Gauri, the golden Swamini, and Blackish Shyam have low shoulders because of their meetings. Tulasi says, Shyam is set alight by the fire of abundant lust, and you extinguished that fire. Sri Ramananda Roy told Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not even a billion gopis can extinguish the blazing fire of Krishna's lusty desires. But Radhika can. From this we can understand Sri Radhika's glories. So we can see here how Ramananda Roy, who is Vishaka, he is or she is confirming the ultimate truth. If the Gopi is confirming the ultimate look, true, so we should accept. Everyone should accept. And this is that Krishna only wants Srimati Radhika. And only she is the person or Saki who can extinguish the blazing fire of his lusty desires. All billions of gopis, even if they come together, with their beauty, charm, sweetness, they cannot do it. And this is the proof which Vishaka, in the form of Ramananda Rai, is confirming. Between us, between Sakis, she is the one and only one. And this is her glories. So Manjaris wants to listen this kind of kata. When also others are glorifying their Swamini. Because they are very proud. Not on themselves, but on Radhika. We are very proud when someone is glorifying our Guru Dev. We are very proud that someone is glorifying Acharyas which we like, Rupa Goswami. Very proud. And we like to listen this kind of glorification. So we can hear here 
how Ramananda Roy expertly nourishing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Radha Bhav and also Manjari Bhav, but Radha Bhav especially. Blessed is this maidservant. How much rasa she makes Swamini relish while serving her. This cannot be experienced without allegiance to Srila Rupa and Raghunathas Goswami. Srila Narodam Das Thakur sings, Jaya Sanatana Rupa Prema Bhakti Rasa Kupa. All glories to Sanatan and Rupa Goswami, the wells of nectar of loving devotion. The mind should be immersed in that well. While Tulasi hangs the garland around Swamini's neck, she reminds her of her past sports with Shyam. If Shyam was now embracing you, there would be no need and no chance anymore for me to put this garland on. The word Kala, as in Kalavati and Kalanini, contains the syllable Ka and La. That indicate the Bija, the, that indicate the Kama Bija, which means the seed of desire. The invocatory syllable of the Kama Gayatri Mantra, in which Krishna is meditated upon as the transcendental, useful Cupid of Vrindavan. Who shines with an abundance of lust. The Radhe. twenty and the Radhe. So we can see here another example how Acharyas, when they are ex addressing Radha and Krishna, Kalavati and Kalanidi. are speaking also in a little bit hidden way and giving the listeners opportunity to receive this karma beach. Because through the listening of these names of Kala Nidi, Kala Vati, Sadaka has opportunity to receive the beach klim from those personalities who are prema rupaya in manjari bhav mood. So when my understanding is when the guru is giving Gayatri mantras. He is giving this Klim Bij Mantra directly to the heart of devotee. 
And without this Bij Mantra, Gayatri Mantra cannot spread. It's like a tree. Tree without seed cannot grow, cannot exist. So this seed, Klim, is the beginning of the tree of devotion, but we can say also that it is ultimate end. And in this Bij Mantra, all the meanings and bhavas are infused. So it takes time that this seed blossom and gives flowers, fruits, whatever tree is giving. Without Klim, mantra cannot function. But this Klim is explaining everything in the essence. Krishna, Radhika, their love between, their embrace and kiss, and ultimately, Manjari, who is serving, loving couple, Yugala Kishore. And we can see Gurudev few, uh, few weeks ago explain that from that many mantras, as we can see in Navadvip mantra and Vraj mantra, they have this claim because this is ultimate goal to become maid servant of Radha and Krishna and to make arrangement for their embracement, kiss, and so on and so on. So devotee is praying to Goranga, cling, praying to Nityananda, praying to all personalities for attaining this final prayojan, final goal. And this clean as I can say, is actually, it's not only mantra, it's, a, it's Takurji, it's person. Radha, Mohan, they are Klim, and they are Manjari, who is so closed, like a shadow, always with them. I said shortly, Maybe Gurudev will add something. And Jayanandaji also. Chakshuji. You can read. Gurudev wants to read. The 24 and a half syllables of this mantra shine like so many moons on each limb of Krishna's luscious body. And each of these syllables is like a shining full moon, Kalanidi of lust. But even though Krishna's moon-like splendor fills the whole world with desire, still his desires increase when he sees Sri Radhika's moon-like face.
Krishna's form is represented in the Karma Gayatri Mantra, which contains 24 and a half syllables. These syllables are like so many moons that arise in Krishna and fill the three worlds with desire. Oh dear girlfriend, Krishna's face is the king of moons and his body is the throne on which he sits to rule the kingdom and to keep the society of moons together. His two glistening cheeks that defeat the shining of jeweled mirrors are two full moons. His forehead is shaped like a half moon and dot of sandal paste on it's like one full moon. His fingernails are like market moons that dance in his, on his flute and their song is the melody of that flute. His toenails are a host of moons that dance on the ground and whose song is the jingling of his ankle bands. So, Radhe, we have here description from Chaitanya Charitamrita about these 24 and half signs or moons on Krishna's transcendental body. Manjaris are also meditating on 24 and half, but not on a Krishna. They are meditating on Shimati Radhika. And they are meditating also in his moon, which appears on his body because he is with Shimati Radhika. And like Gurudev explained in this half, they meditating on themselves. I am this half. I am this small kinkari which wants to serve them. And Gurudev is saying 12 is on Radhika's side, 12 is on Krishna's side, Yugala Kishore. But devotees who are Krishna's devotees, they are meditating only on Krishna. That's okay. But it's not Manjari Bhav. But it's very often mentioned in the scriptures. But we forget one thing. That this explanation, which is given in Chaitanya Charitamrita, is given to nourish Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mood that he is Radharani. And Radhika is meditating on all Krishna's signs, moons, and devotees are talking about this because they want to nourish his mood 
of in rather bath. But again, I say the manjaris are not meditating on Krishna's 24 signs. They meditate on 24 signs of Radhika, but also, like Guru Dev is saying, in Yuga Lakishore, 12 and 12. Please, Guru Dev, correct me and add. We don't hear you, sorry. Galavati and Galani Bhi. Right? Why these two things is mentioned? And one, this is mentioned. Why? Because what you are practicing do that. You are Kalavati and Kalanidhi practicing, then it's a different meaning. It depends upon your how you got the seed. By mercy of my Gurudev, I got Kalavati and Kalaniti in seed. Kalanidhi means Krishna, a Kalavati means Radhika. And Kalavati always has a shadow. That is my journey. <laughs> <laughs> this half is for shadow of Kalavati. <clears throat> yeah, that is. See that what is written. <laughs> Two meanings Baba gives. One is hidden, one is open. <coughs> <coughs> right? <coughs> yes, Gurudev. Yeah. Yes. And always we should approach with this awareness that something is openly written and this relieved but behind we should try to dive in behind meanings yeah many many instructions are given for the like a general instructions <laughs> but parakya bhava yeah. is <laughs> yeah yeah mean is something words are something yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is speciality of Parakya Baba. Yeah. And philosophy doesn't help that here. Chakshu is understanding everything. I'm very proud of this. He can help so many people. Always he is helping. I'm very proud that he is translating, reading for you. Very good team. Go on, open. Thank you. After adorning Trimati with the flower garland, Tulsi places a big jeweled mirror before her and says, Hey, Syamaju, just see now how I decorate you. Swamini is enchanted when she sees her sweet reflection in the mirror and proudly says, Tulasi, you really know how to make Krishna enjoy. Even when he sees me without makeup, he becomes enchanted. 
So I cannot imagine how he will feel when he sees this extraordinary beauty. Everything will be wasted when my hero cannot enjoy all this. In this way, Swamini speaks out her heart to Tulasi in so many ways. Suddenly the vision ends and Srila Raghunathas laments and prays as follows. <clears throat> o artistic queen of the Rasa dance, Shirade, by your mercy, Madame Mohan can hold you around the neck during the luscious Maharasa Leela. As you both dance in the middle of the Rasa circle. <clears throat> oh Rade, during this erotic Rasa pastime, your Lord became known as the brightly shining full moon of lust. Who knows the glory of your neck and of your special sweet attributes? I will hang a sweet jasmine garland that is surrounded by a swarm of buzzing bumblebees around that neck and thus make it even more splendid. Sri Das Goswami prays, I will stay at your feet and render so many kinds of service. This is the end of the purport of verse 44. <clears throat> 